The new EU tyre label will be compulsory as of November 2012. The effects will become apparent at the latest when your vehicle needs new tyres, like our Tina tyre here. What awaits us when we enter a tyre dealer sales room? We can see right away if the tyres differ in three key tyre criteria. This is made easy by the colour scales and the value representing the so-called passing noise, and yet it can still be quite confusing at first. Tina is already partially familiar with the system used for refrigerators. The more energy efficient a refrigerator is, the greener the graphic. But she has no idea what all this means when it comes to tyres. The tyre dealer explains to Tina the information shown on the new EU tyre label and which individual characteristics it addresses. The label focuses on three key characteristics of a tyre. Energy efficiency, tyre grip on wet roads, and the intensity of the passing noise. For the first two criteria, A is the best mark. For passing noise, the absolute value is given in decibels. This makes sense for the consumer and provides an instant overview. Of course, Tina also wants to know exactly what the individual points mean. The question is, what impact do the individual points have? The tyre salesperson will be happy to explain everything to her in detail at the information corner in the shop. First of all, they look at the energy efficiency of the tyre or the influence on the vehicle's fuel consumption. Reducing the rolling resistance always saves fuel and with it CO2 emissions. What difference does a B tyre make compared with a C tyre? Let's put it to the test. The test begins in Hanover. A tyre from fuel category C uses almost 0.12 more litres of fuel over a distance of 100 kilometres than a tyre from category B. The Tyre Pro has Tina travel right through Germany once, through Switzerland and down to northern Italy. The journey ends in Milan after 1,000 kilometres. It's true, the C Tyre has now used over 1.2 litres of fuel more than a tyre from Class B. The same applies to other routes of 1,000 kilometres. From Flensburg to Munich, the same as for the journey from La Havre to Marseille, from Barcelona to Seville, and from Rome to Palermo. And the calculations can continue in the same way. A tyre from Class E uses around 2.4 litres more fuel over 1,000 kilometres than a tyre from Class B. D has not been proven. So the issue of fuel is cleared up. What about braking distance on wet roads? The tyreman and Tina take a closer look. A car with tyres in braking distance Class A stops in the shortest time from a speed of 80 kilometres per hour. A car with tyres from Class B stops 3 metres later. Class C tyres need another 4 metres to come to a standstill, and the same applies to Classes E and F with another 5 and 6 metres to come to a standstill. D and G have not been proven. In concrete terms, this means there is a difference of up to 18 metres between the braking distance for Class A and Class F. Let's take a closer look again. The vehicle with Category A tyres comes to a stop the fastest. At this point, the vehicle with the Category B tyres is still travelling at 25 km per hour. The vehicle with the Category C tyres is still travelling at 34 km per hour. The vehicle with the Category E tyres passes at 42 km per hour. While the vehicle with the Category F tyres passes the original point at 49 km per hour. Now for the final point, noise levels. Tina learns that there are three classes that characterize the external noise of a tyre. The different noise symbols on the label show the absolute decibel values. Tina now has all the information she needs. Her tyre specialist really has given her the whole picture. And his conclusion is clear. A complete understanding of the tyre can only be obtained through an extensive tyre test by an independent trade magazine. That's because it examines absolutely all factors key to objectively judging a tyre. That's why it's so important to take an all-round look at a tyre. Factors like its behaviour in case of aquaplaning, dry braking, dry handling and handling on a wet surface also play a decisive role in recognizing a good tire. Also, special criteria for winter tires are missing. And how about start-up on snow? Does it slip when traveling uphill on snow? 
What is its braking performance on snow and ice? How good is handling in general at temperatures lower than 7 degrees Celsius? Both parties agree. The label provides a good overview, but cannot replace a consultation with the specialist dealer.